All right, guys, so this video we're going to do a rear suspension setup and how to decide which setup is best for your application. Uh, this is something that we had quite a bit of trouble with when we were deciding what to use on our cross cart because there's a whole bunch of different options and we're going to go over some of the, you know, the five most common ones for an independent uh, setup. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So the first one is a, the double wishbone suspension. Uh, this is going to be your standard issue. Uh, everyone's going to use it. Most of you are probably going to use it too. So it's characterized by the the two wishbone arms or a arms you could call it too that uh, connect to the the spindle. So some of the main points about this is you're going to have really high control over this uh, so if you're like doing any racing or on if you're on a flat track it's gonna um, you're gonna have really well control over the wheels and it's gonna handle really well um, one of the downsides though is if you're on like rougher terrain or it's really rocky and nasty terrain kind of like where we're on they're not going to be as strong as some other setups and it's just uh not quite going to be the the best option for you so um another key thing is you're not going to have to worry too much about cv axle plunge as you can see here on on this setup the pivot points um go through where the cv axle joints are at so when uh on something like that the uh you're not going to have to worry about uh, your CV axle binding or, and, th and things like that so this is just the pretty much the run-of-the-mill setup that everyone's gonna be using you can't really go wrong with it so the next one is the single wishbone um, this is gonna be pretty easy to make you're not gonna have a whole lot of strength though and but from doing this but you are gonna have considerable amount of space if, if that's something that you need to worry about you're also going to have camber change um, you can on the double wishbone if you set it up that way or you can set it up with heim joints on all the ends if you want to um, to set it up you know if you want zero camber change or some throughout the throughout the travel but this one you will have it you're not going to worry too much about plunge either on your axle on this one the they're just using as you could even use a single U joint but the the joint here is not in line with the pivot point but if, if it were you wouldn't have to worry about plunge and it's just simple to make but maybe not the best option if you're gonna be uh, driving pretty hard with your machine so this setup is the trailing arm and the semi trailing arm um, this cart we actually made this is our first uh, first cart that we made uh, second time through on the rear suspension as you can see some of this has already been painted uh, as far as the cost goes this can be quite varied depending on how uh, maybe if you want heim joints here on the end so you can adjust your toe if you don't build it perfect the first time so on like we did on this one we had uh, bushings in here so we can't adjust our toe um, directly so what we have to do is you have to put shims behind our wheel bearing if this is a bolt-on wheel bearing you, you can see uh, we have a different video about it but it's a bolt-on wheel bearing you can shim it to, to adjust the roll um, or adjust the toe so the reason why we chose this setup is because trailing arms have a considerably are considerably stronger than uh, an a-arm setup and the reason because of this is they move in the direction that the cart moves if that makes sense so instead of being perpendicular uh, to the direction of movement like an a-arm would be here they're in line so if a rock is coming this way and it hits the arm uh, or it hits the you know the suspension hits it it's gonna move in the direction that the suspension moves um, one thing you are gonna have to note about this is you will have more body roll with an a-arm setup so you may have to run a sway bar on, on this cart we didn't and it, it does roll quite a bit um, 
And then uh, another thing you have to worry about is your plunge. So the um, when the arm goes up, so if the arm is the wheel bearing is in line with the axle, it's actually shorter. This is your shortest distance. So when your arm moves up like this, the distance from this point here to here is actually longer now than it would be from the distance from this point from here to here. So that's one thing you're gonna have to pay attention to if you are gonna use a trailing arm or a semi-trailing arm setup. The only difference between the two is a semi-trailing arm instead of having these two points be in line with the axle these will be at an angle so this one might be a little farther forward so you will get camber change if you your body does roll or throughout the travel so your wheel stays flat on the ground but that's one thing that we had trouble with is you really have to pay attention to uh, how much plunge you have and then this is some of you probably seen this before this on our other cart this is the setup that we used again or um on the the kj racing cart so this is our three link setup so you have well, one two and then three links so some of the notable things about this is pretty easy to make i mean it's just a two straight links and then two bend pieces uh it's going to be high pretty high strength because again you have that trailing arm set up so that it moves in line with the direction of the cart and uh it also has side support like an a-arm would whereas on the trailing arm it didn't the only two points connecting this are right here there's nothing really holding it moving from side to side whereas on this these two rod uh or these four uh connecting rods will keep it moving side to side and you'll be under a straight compression or tension load um this is pretty easy to adjust to so we have heim joints on all these so you can adjust the toe adjust the camber it's really easy to get the thing perfectly aligned uh, you will have to have heim joints on all five of these connections so that's something to also take notice and this one up here is going to have to be pretty big this is also pretty common on a uh, some of the newer side-by-sides so I imagine in the next couple of years that uh, instead of having to fab something up here you could just buy something and connect your arms to it because uh, that's how they do it they just have a, a hub here that they arms connect to so our last one is a five link suspension this is gonna be you know very high strength and easy to make so all there really is is just five straight rods Again, like with the three link, you will have to have high end joints on all of these uh, ends. So you're going to be up, you know, 10 high joints aside here. So it, it can be, the, the bill can add up pretty quick. Uh, you are going to get really good performance because you can adjust it to whatever you want. So if you want no camber change, you can have none. If you want you can adjust the toe you can adjust every single thing you can whereas on here you will have some camber change but on here you can have it your, your wheel perfectly straight up and down through the travel um, again like with the three link you will have the benefits the the strength benefits of both the the a arm and the trailing arm because you will be moving in the direction of travel here of the of the cart and you'll have that perpendicular support going around corners as well um, especially on the, the five link and the three link you will have to worry somewhat about CV plunge but not nearly as much as with a trailing arm you can see it better in here it's more like an A arm setup where we have our CV axle close to these connecting rods same on this setup the CV axle is is close to here so it's going to act more like a a arm where it'll run on a radius like uh so it'll always be more or less the same distance away throughout the entirety of the travel because you have these connecting rods here whereas on here it's perpendicular to the 
it's always moving perpendicular so once you get to the ends of the travel your your wheel is actually farther away from the center of your spool at the ends of your travel so on this setup we probably got 12 inches of travel of usable travel uh, with the Miata axles and then just by changing to this setup we got about 16 of you of actual usable travel now the carp is only set up with about eight eight or nine but it, it can move about 16 inches before it starts binding whereas on here it only move about uh, 12 so with that that's our uh, you know just a quick rundown on what types of suspension might work best for you uh, for us these two typically uh, really work the best but for most of you the the double wishbone is going to be more than fine enough you're not going to be you know driving on really nasty trails kind of like we are there's lots of big rocks around where we're at and the, the double wishbone is going to be more than fine enough for most people just because everyone's everyone has it it's easy to make and most people aren't too worried about uh space either because they're using a you know a motorcycle engine where you could kind of see some of it here we had to, this is another sled engine it's going to take up more room with the pipe and then you're going to have to run two clutches and a transmission so that's some of the reason why we we decided to go with these two setups over a double wishbone setup but so with that being said, I hope you liked this quick uh, summary on uh, different uh, rear suspension setups. Uh, if, if you guys want uh, a little bit more in-depth detail on how to actually calculate some of these things out uh, as far as clearances and uh, uh, making parts fit and things like that, uh, comment down below. And if there's any other videos that you guys would like to see, make sure to comment down below. Uh, Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.